You're listening to Mind Body Home with your host, Sarah Ann. Do you ever feel like life just keeps throwing you curveballs? And I'm curious how you handle life when you get that. And that's definitely what me and my family are experiencing right now. It's the reason why I missed getting an episode out last week. I do apologize if you were waiting for an updated episode to be released. Um, But it's been a hectic two weeks. There's been an interesting turn of events in this thing that we all call life. But I do have some exciting news I want to announce. I also want to give you a rundown of some of the guests I'm having on the podcast this summer. I decided to run all of my interviews as a summer guest series. And I did that primarily because it allows me to get them recorded, edited, and scheduled to be released all summer long without too much involvement of myself. And that allows me to be more present with my kids while they're home. So it was really an intentional thing for me. Last week, my mother-in-law was uh, visiting us. And so, of course, there was a lot going on there. And, you know, usually when I record my episodes, they're usually recorded a day or two prior to them being released because I really want you to feel like you're sort of living uh, alongside of me. There's a lot, you know, going on in my life that comes up and I want to share it. Um, You know, how I move through life, how I experience my home, you know, that's really the inspiration for this show. And so, you know, I really try to record in real time as best I can, especially when I'm talking more just myself. You know, of course, guest conversations can be pre-recorded and scheduled, as I just said. But, um, you know, when I'm really trying to talk about how I personally live and how I share that information with you, um, I want it to feel as though you're sort of following along present day. I think it's really authentic to share life as it unfolds. And that's really what I want to share with you today. And if you've been listening for some time, you know that my family and I just moved to Austin uh, back in October from Pennsylvania. And the news is that we are moving again. This time we're moving to Florida. We are all very excited. Um, You know, there's really nothing negative I have to say about this. Um, I'm sure for some of you, this is like a huge shock. But it is all very, very exciting. Um, My husband and I lived in Florida 20 years ago. This is where we both lived out our 20s. So we had an amazing time. Um, The friends we've made in Florida have become lifelong friends. I consider them as close as family. We have always missed it dearly. Anytime we really take a family vacation, we end up in Florida. We used to live in Naples, Florida. But this time around, we're going to be right outside of Tampa. So we ended up having to leave Florida in 2010 during the economic financial slash housing crisis. We unfortunately got caught up in that, purchasing our very first home. Um, It was sort of devastating. We sort of felt forced to leave. We ended up having to lose the house, walk away from the house. We ended up going through a bankruptcy all of which we have learned and grown from. And rather quickly, we really bounced back from that quickly, considering um, how much of a devastating blow it felt at the time. But, you know, looking back on it, I can certainly say it's one of the biggest experiences and life lessons that I will probably live through in this lifetime. So there's something that feels very full circle about moving back there, especially 20 years later. We talked about in the beginning of this year how we're beginning a new 20-year cycle. When I left Pennsylvania, there was a huge energy around endings and new beginnings, especially around the number nine. I did an episode on the number nine and what that represented, um, not just in numerology terms, but for me personally and my home. So, you know, 20 years later, we're heading back and There's something that just feels very homecoming about that. So what's even more interesting is as all of this is sort of unfolding, I was given the opportunity to declutter once again. And now I'm working on the boxes that we hadn't gotten to. I'm going through them again. And I came across 
all of my interior design boxes, all of the materials and supplies and office stuff that I had packed but had never really put into use since being here in Texas because I wasn't sure how I wanted to proceed from a design perspective. Um, I was playing around with different ideas. You know, do I do full service design like I always had? Do I focus on maybe just paint consultations and window treatments? Do I target builders and help families who buy into new builds? Because there's so much, you know, once the house is built, there's so many things that need to be implemented. So I was really focusing on how I wanted to start up again. But I was also noticing the resistance in my body that would come up every time I would make an attempt at putting myself out there. And I wasn't sure if it was fears around, you know, knowing what it takes to like lift a business off the ground, especially a service business where you've got to market yourself and get yourself out there and find the clients. Like, was I feeling resistance in that or was I just feeling resistance in the industry as a whole? And, you know, looking back on it, I knew what I was resisting, but I was really fighting it. And I think, you know, Even in conversations with close friends, it was very obvious that I wasn't really in love with the business, the industry, like I was when I first started. Um, And I think, surprise, surprise, COVID changed a lot of that for me. Um, So I decided to go through the boxes very intentionally, very discerning as to whether or not do I want to take these to Florida? Do I see myself doing interior design in Florida? And the answer was no. And it was a very easy no. I felt it in my body. I felt very expansive in the heart space, in my chest, like I could breathe deeper. And that was a sure sign to me that it's time to let it go. And there was something very powerful in that moment because I always kind of knew that was the answer not even kind of, I knew that that was the answer, but I was so scared because this was my first baby. And what I felt in that moment was nothing fearful. I felt joy and excitement and a sense of expansion. And so it's interesting. We have been decluttering our things for the last almost a year. We started last summer before we moved to Texas. And it's just so incredible to me how much more there is always to go through. And um, this feels really good. Not only the move feels good, letting go of the design services feels really good. Um, Yeah, I just feel really, really good. So all of that to say, we are moving to Florida. I will no longer be offering interior design services. The shop, feng shui, coaching, those are the things that bring me joy. And I love providing those services. And now I have room to expand and offer more because I'm not weighted down by not only the materials and the supplies that were physically weighing me down, but the mental confusion the confusion out to the universe as to do we set up a business do we not do we tell this person we offer services do we not do we make these postcards for the builder down the street do we not you know there was just so much back and forth and now i can just release all of that thought that's just taking up so much space in my head and now i've announced it it's like a real thing right i'm announcing it to you to the world it's done so more to come on how the business evolves. And, you know, obviously it's going to take some time until we let things settle in Florida. Um, obviously this summer will be a lot of packing and moving and all of the all of that stuff. So what to expect from the podcast this summer? We have some really exciting guests this summer. What I love about Feng Shui is there's so many ways to utilize the wisdom and power that it holds. And I've invited on practitioners that have niched into several different areas of, or topics that are really powerful. And, and I think it just brings a whole new understanding, energy, and life to our own personal feng shui. It'll give us a different way that we can perceive it and ourselves. So we're going to talk about sensuous and art and the concept of neuroaesthetics. 
We will have an expert on feng shui and fashion, how to dress using color and the elements to attract things to you, whether it's people, jobs, you know, whatever it is you're trying to manifest or whatever it is you desire, you can literally wear certain things to attract that to you. We'll be talking about feng shui and autoimmune disease and nervous system regulation. That's going to be a big one. I think a lot of people are going to resonate with that. We're, of course, going to have feng shui and real estate. Uh, For me personally, this is so fitting and timely. Uh, And then we're going to talk about feng shui and travel. A lot of people don't know that you have a travel companion in your home that you can use to manifest more travel. And um, this is actually a part of your helpful people, Gua. So um, my guest is going to talk about that. She's actually a retired jet pilot. So she's also going to share some wisdom on how to best prepare your own personal chi for travel. You know, travel for a lot of people is very fear-inducing, a lot of anxiety around it. So Wendy is going to have a plethora of information to share with us. So lots and lots to can. I do want to try to get another guest on. I want to talk about retreats and travel and how that all contributes to our well-being. Retreats are huge right now. And so if you listening or you know anyone that specializes in that and could really speak to retreats, why they're popular, why they're important, how they contribute to our wellness, I want to talk to you. So please go to the website and fill out a guest form. I definitely am looking for someone to talk about that. And that's it. We have a a full lineup. There might be a few others sprinkled in there, but just to give you what to expect, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, so that you are alerted of when those episodes come out. And the other thing I want to do, it's not ready yet, but make sure you're on my email list to be notified of our summer sale on the shop items. Again, back to decluttering. I don't want to move with all this inventory again, so I'm going to be deeply discounting a lot of the products that are on the shop. So if you've been eyeing something up and you haven't purchased it yet, June is going to be your month um, to enjoy really deep discounts on that. Uh, So I really hope that you all will help me out at liquidating some of this stuff. I want to keep the shop going. It's not going away with the interior design, but I just need to kind of let go of some things in order to sort of regroup and really reconsider what do I want to offer? There's some best sellers on there, things I'm definitely going to keep, but there's also some things I might consider letting go. And those are the ones that are obviously going to be deeply discounted. So make sure you're on my email list to get alerted of that sale. I hope that you find something that you will love and enjoy. And I think that's it. Guys, I'm so excited. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to continue sharing my journey with you. It keeps evolving and changing. And I'm so blessed and grateful for your presence and your support. Until next week, I'm sending you so much love and gratitude.